Hey guys, today's the day. We're going to do a project that we wanted to do for quite some time. I've got my DeWalt oscillating saw, so let's get on with some demo. So in today's video, we're going to remove this panel next to the refrigerator and see what's in there. When we do, hopefully we're going to come up with a plan to add some additional storage in this location. Or at the very worst, make a plan to repair what I'm fixing the damage. So the first thing we did was kill the power to the camper. Secondly, I pulled six screws, slid this microwave out. With those things accomplished, it was ready to investigate. So the wires were bound by a zip tie right here, right exactly where I was going to be cutting with the oscillating saw. So I cut more of this access panel away up above so that I could reach it. It wasn't real easy, but I was able to reach down there and snip off those uh, cable ties with these cutters. So with everything out of the way, it was time to get cutting. So what did we find? We found wires. Now we already knew that most of these were in here, but opening up this panel allowed us a closer look at where they were entering and exiting the space. I do have some screws that are exposed, about six of them that stick through the back of this panel. I'm glad we took the panel out now for no other reason than I'm going to go ahead and cut these screws off to make sure they don't wear holes in these wires going down the road. It might save me a lot of problems. I want to thank all the others that have gone before us and gave us an idea of what we might expect to find behind this panel, especially one of our viewers, Lee. He's already done this and did a super job. All right, so the cubby is complete. I'm real happy with the way it turned out. And it's attractive and we're actually using it. This is our first time on the road with this modification and I would give it uh, five stars. Yeah, we've been very happy um, with everything. We were looking for a space that solves some of the needs in the camper. So now this cubby allows us to stack waters in here. I found these soft fabric baskets that um, will squeeze into this tight space and we can store dog leashes or keys or any other of the small stuff around the camper. And this big area here at the top, we can now put the collapsible broom in here. We can hang up our coats. We can hang up hats. My shoes will fit in here. This area has just worked out really, really well. So we're going to give some more detail on the build out here in a minute, but first we're going to just quickly walk you through what we did. And it started with that outside interior wall of the cubby. Yeah, this had to be done first. So I used quarter inch plywood. We had some in the shop. We just cut it down, used liquid nail and affixed it to this outside wall. The reason we used it is I wanted a little something extra to use screws uh, for these hooks. I needed something for that, those screws to bite in and I really didn't want it to go too far into the wall. We also put some screws in at the top just to make sure that the glue would hold um, this panel. So once we were done that though, the next thing was to figure out how to get these hooks on in this small space. They had already cut this panel out on the side wall of this microwave and I used that opening to drive my screws directly in for the hooks. So that made that really convenient. So once we had that first wall secured, it was onto that larger false wall so we could go ahead and hide all the wires. Yeah, it's constructed a little more complex than it looks. 
It's actually a false wall that has a chaseway in the middle. The chaseway had to be wide enough and deep enough so that all the wires for this camper and the majority of the wires for this camper run right up through here. We had to provide a way to protect them and we had to provide a way to have a finished edge on this side of the cabinet. So we had to fabricate that separate. Right, because we wanted it to look like a built-in cubby. Right. So right now we're going to take a closer look at how we built that wall. So this is the finished panel. Now to build it, we started with that quarter inch plywood and cut it to the size we wanted. Then we used some wood strips that were about three quarters of an inch thick and about one inch wide. And we attached those with some wood glue and nails. These were used to build up these edges and this area here is where the wires will go. These three supports are for the shelf supports on the other side. Now remember those screws from earlier? Well, unfortunately we weren't able to cut them off. They move really easily and we couldn't get a good cut with the oscillating saw because it was such a tight space. So we left them and addressed it by isolating them on this side and this side away from the wires. So once this backside was complete, we flipped it over and attached three of those same wood strips for the shelf supports on the front. Now if you notice, this shelf support sits right at the bottom. That's because this wall doesn't go all the way to the floor. We'll talk about why in a minute. And lastly, we gave it a good sand, primed, painted, before it was installed. Now this was challenging as we had to screw this wall into the existing area in a very tight space. So for this, we used a very short screwdriver and this attachment for our DeWalt drill. So we screwed the false wall to these wood strips that run down the existing wall in the back and front. Now back to that bottom piece. As you can see here, the wires prevented us from taking it all the way to the floor. So we had to cut another board and attached it to the bottom of the false wall and to the floor so it would help support this new wall. Then it was time to set the shelves. Now these were a tight fit, so they wedged in there and allowed us to mark where the shelf supports for the side went. Then it was back to using that short screwdriver and that drill attachment to get those screws in. Once that was complete, it was done. Now it was just time to do the finish work. Okay, so once that, that was installed, then we decided to do the finishing part of it. And we wanted it to look like a built-in cubby. That's it. We wanted it to look like it complemented the camper as right. much as possible. So we painted the entire thing. Um, now we had primed that quarter inch panel and that wall before we ever put Not it. Not our in first there. to go round. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but we also like painted that back wall um, the same color, so that way it would all look nice and finished. Blended and then we just together. trimmed it out with like different pieces of wood casing. Yeah, this is some scribe-like material that we ran through the table saw. This was some one by material that we cut for width, so that it trimmed nice. This is just very basic, very small window casing to make a waterfall effect to hide the supports that we had to fasten right and left to support these shelves. Yeah, and then the shelves, we just cocked them in and they actually have held up really well, um, even anywhere. with the travel. Um, right now we're going to do some Q&A though, because there's some reasons we did what we did. Okay, Troy, uh, most of the ones we've seen done actually have a door on them. Why didn't we put the door on there? A door would have been nice, but for us a door is not practical for a couple reasons. We have this nice handle that we really enjoy on this screen door. When it, in a closed position, it would have impeded the swing of any kind of a door that we fastened. And um, it would have made it just so tight to open that yeah. we would have had even less space to reach into. Yeah, space is at a premium with this mod, and that door just didn't offer any uh, real benefit for us. Yeah, and worst case scenario, we still have that old panel, so we could make a door if we ever found we wanted one. True. What would be an easier way to use this space? The simplest thing, simplest by far, would be to make a simple door with a couple box hinges, really easy, and then take a plastic um, conduit like you would have corrugated conduit, 
cut the backside and pack the electrical wires into the conduit where they were protected. And at that point, you'd have a top to floor, I mean, a top to bottom cabinet cubby that you could store long types of things easily, like brooms, fishing poles, just about anything that you wanted to use it for. Okay, Troy, so um, on a lot of our how-to videos, we give step-by-step. -step. Yeah. Now, this one, we just kind of showed how we built the wall and some of the things that came our way and some of the install, but we didn't do like a detailed install. Why was that? Yeah, real simple. Everyone's camper is slightly different. We had some factory field modifications on the side panel yeah, that we had screws. to overcome. We had screws sticking out. We had to deal with that. So for that reason, look at this video as an idea of what you might encounter and what you might have to do. Yeah, and two, everyone's gonna want something a little different. Okay, this this is the last question. This was a fun project. Yeah. Um, but um sometimes. <laughs> what's the what's the tip, Troy? The tip is there are two things we've done in this camper that might lead to marital discord. <laughs> this particular cubby, which pound for pound probably gave us more problems than anything we've had to touch because it does have a whole bunch of really serious constraints that you have to deal with. And that doorknob, <laughs> having to cut out a new back set and modify an existing slab door for a Euro style doorknob, both these projects together gave us moments of uh, issue. <laughs> Yes, but I have to say, I, I love the doorknob and I love this new cubby. So we're very happy we did it. Um, we do have some more modifications coming up this year. So if you'd like to see those. Like and subscribe. And remember, camping dog Desi. Always likes you to hit that notification bell.